فما زلت ذا عفو عن الذنوب لم تزل تجود وتعفو منة وتكرما Have you clocked? I don't know. Maybe uh, boss man are unionizing now. But have you noticed that when you walk into sh- into the shop now, boss man is now calling you boss man? Yes. Yeah. I don't um, like being called boss. Maybe they're trying to, they're trying to claim back their I, word. And I, I think it's, uh, it's what they call youths. Mm. I don't think they call uh, Charles and that. Boss. I don't know. I think Obviously, they, Peckham, I, like, the new the shop that I go to more time if I get chicken shirts is on Peckham, yeah. like right in. And there's always the Shoreditch men that are there. And they don't call them boss. I think they're just trying to claim their word back. Soon it's going to be racist to I call boss man, boss man. No, is uh, Do you call fish and chip man boss man? To be honest, it's never really something I've He's said. He's more of a mate. I, no, I, I just do it in corner shops, really. He's more of a mate. Yeah. So why is Dave your mate, but. <laughs> but, but, you, but, uh, but Pravendeep is boss. Don't ask me, Pravendeep. Huh? <laughs> don't ask me. I'm just, I'm just following social norms. He's, Sorry. he's huh? boss man, isn't it? That's what he's just known as, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi people. Um, you are back with Jalaf Asa German. This is episode 67. There's no one over there that you can't see on camera. It's just me and Abdul Malik today. <laughs> Why just there? Why just there? It's me and Abdul Malik today. Um, we will, we're going to be very... Uh, Short and punchy with this episode, inshallah. Um, yeah, which is um, let us know what you think of short and punchy as well. Yeah, in the comments. Um, yeah, let us know if you think it's more kind of impactful, impactful, um, less waffle. Mm. Inshallah. Uh, I like long yeah. episodes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you like long episodes, but yeah. I don't. Uh, so we got Maghrib soon, so we need to crack on. Um, inshallah, today we're gonna just talk mainly about what's happening. Currently, mm. um, obviously, we're a nation mourning currently because the what? Nothing. We're a nation mourning. We're a nation you, mourning. Yeah, go on. <laughs> you be respectful, please. <laughs> <laughs> Have some respect. Okay, sorry. There's some decorum. Yes. Yes, because um, for us, when we're recording yesterday, the news broke that Queen Elizabeth II um, passed away. Um, and. Yeah, sprung, a lot of things of, of, of a lot of themes have sprung up from it. Mm. Um, a lot of themes have sprung up from it. Um, mm. There was some heat in the. It was kicking off in the group chat yeah. yesterday. Uh, we won't say the specifics of the reason, but it will come out probably a bit later when we discuss. Um, and yeah, man, um, some Muslims, as always, when something big happens, some Muslims start doing some some dodgy things, questionable some thing, questionable yeah. things, and it raises a lot of questions. And a lot of people, uh, their ignorance. Uh, gets exposed and this is talking about us as well because obviously we're ignorant of a lot of things we're not experts um but the issue is when people start acting with ignorance yeah that's the that's that's the issue especially when they act publicly um and yeah man um there was something else i wanted to say but i cannot remember i cannot remember um but yeah man so how's how's how have you taken the news um Pretty much the same as any other news of this kind of fashion, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. It's just life goes on, isn't it? Obviously, hopefully we get a bank holiday or two out of this. That's the, that's, that's the main difference. But other than that, it's just, yeah. And um, because mainly on social media, I don't really try and I, 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 I tend to... St- Steer clear. It sounds weird, but specifically on Twitter, I try to kind of steer clear of the Muslim scene because mm. it's just wild, and I don't want to interact with it. And I know why I'm there, so that sounds crazy. But yeah, um, for those who know, I mean, you know, what I mean. Um, so I didn't actually, I wasn't actually aware of all of the kind of jaggery that was going on until uh he sent it in the group chat yes and then i started actually seeing the the post and i saw the comments underneath it and it was just yeah there's there, there's two sides to it um one side is you know there's nothing wrong with it it's some 
it's partly just like basic etiquette. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're gonna have to give context. So for context, um, I guess I can say so. Mm-hmm. Put our post very brief, and it was just saying that they were passing the conduct. I think if I'm if I'm to be honest, let me let, let me just get my facts right before I talk. But I believe they were just passing their condolences on to while, while you're looking for it, the royal family. While you're looking for it, um, <clears throat> do, do you have any um, do you have any resonance of any sadness for her passing? Speaking honestly, no, honestly, I don't, and yeah, I really don't. Um, why? <laughs> I don't know. I I, I don't. Tell well, okay, uh, compared to let's say let's say uh, I told you some okay, compare it to I don't know. Oh yeah, some some old lady I work with. I worked with you know she she passed away like retired and she passed away. Is it like the same thing? It's just if I knew her. If you, if no, no, someone it's, that you knew. it's just I don't even really know. I just is it just an old woman passing away? Do you think it's wrong to um, have some element of sadness? I don't. I, I no. I don't think it's wrong to have an element of sadness. Obviously, it depends on what extent to that is. If you're lamenting over it, then it's kind of weird. Mm. But. I think if it's just you know oh that's sad, then fair enough. Maybe me me in in general, I, and I haven't thought about it extensively. But generally, if if someone I don't know passes away, it doesn't really affect me mm. because I guess what impact has that person had on my life for me to be feel sad over their death? So I don't really feel yeah, any, yeah, yeah. any 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 way, any kind of way about it. Familiarity, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. So no, not 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 really an, an, any sadness at all. See, I I I I didn't have sadness, but what I had was a uh, oh, that's what I had. Yeah, there was which like, is, and which is, there was there was the initial shock. Oh, yeah, well, cr- crap, well, yeah it wasn't said. really a shock, but yeah. but um, but yeah, it, it was. I I think it was a shock. It was still a shock because, I, by the way, I thought I I think she's by the time they announced she'd been dead. I think yeah. first and foremost, but yeah. when the notification came up front, I was still shocked. I, I was like, so "Wow, she's actually dead!" Oh, I was okay. shocked. I think I was waiting for it. Um, Fair enough. I th- uh, was based on all the lack of appearances and that yeah. type of thing, I think anyway. But anyway, that's getting speculation. Forget that. And um, for me, I think the reason I asked that question is because I think one of the issues is I think there's been a lot of conflation in 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 different themes that people need to kind of separate out, mm-hmm. and that's what um, has caused a lot of the kind of debate. So, for example, somebody being sad, for example, somebody's death is different from somebody making a statement about somebody's death, which yeah. is different than somebody uh, making dua for somebody mm. who's dead, which is different from hating somebody. You know what I mean? But yeah. there's all these different themes mm. that, inshallah, we want to just kind of talk about individually um, that people are mixing up and saying and that that's if, the thing, yeah. yes, it's which this, is an this, issue. This, this is the thing with, with social media. Like I said, like I was saying last week, where people just add or remove context wherever they see fit. So the post that came out from um, East London Mosque was, we pass our sincere condolences to the royal family on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. And then the rest of it was just statements. So the Queen has served as a monarch mm. for 70 years, blah, 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 blah. That was mm. it. So the first, and, and something we should have said from the beginning as well is that us at Jolof of the Jumat, uh, myself and Ibs, we are not scholars. We are not um, any sort of religious authority. We are completely fallible human beings. And when we spoke, if we even mentioned something to, you know, different organizations, etc., we speak with the wholehearted knowledge that there are people in these institutions that are, that their knowledge surpasses us. Mm. So there's no sort of a, we know better type thing. Yeah. I, I will try to, I don't think anything will come across that way. And we'll try not to come across that way. But it's easy when two people sit down in front of a camera for it to be uh, perceived as... No, I'm, I'm smiling. What oh, you're it's, it's easy for two people to be uh, in front of a camera to be perceived as a, uh, as 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 people who are trying to sound yeah. that way. So we just literally bought a camera and put it on and turned it on. It's like recording. It doesn't mean that we're geniuses. Um, yeah. Let me just get that get out of the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So that message in itself, I, I I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that message at all. But then if you look at if if you look at the comments underneath, have some shame. They're not gonna donate. This is haram, right? and it's yeah, like, yeah. What are you t- like that. In the way I see that is that is just adab. That's just having manners. Why is in them sending them? Then them just putting that putting that out then and I still know. don't. I don't think I still. And this is from me. I they kind of don't think they should have put the message out though. Still, I think okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna ask you why in a second. Yeah. I I there's a part of me that feels like they had to put that message out. Go on. Convince me. I'm open to be convinced by that. And 
I because of the, the size of the organization of, 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 of the organization, mm-hmm. I feel like if they didn't put a message out, um, it could have been condemned. Mm-hmm. That you know that you claim to be an organization for the community, but something this big has rocked our nation, and you said absolutely nothing on it. So I feel like other messages, maybe smaller messages, can get away with not saying anything, but a message of that size couldn't. So, and and okay. I could be wrong here. I could be wrong here. So, That's just an excuse I'm giving. So, the, so the, yeah, of course. So, the, so the benefit is basically to what's the yeah, So, what's the benefit? Can yeah, it, I, I get I, and and because I, I thought of it when I when when I when I first started speaking, I did think of that when I first started speaking. Yeah. Um and and again, that's just an excuse I'm giving them. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, so in in that kind of scenario, not saying that's the reason they did it, but it could just be to please the kuffar. That would be maybe the 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 mm. note the um driving force behind to, that to, kind of to, statement to protect but, to protect the 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 out view of the. That's on the Muslims, that's something better like than that. Pleasing the that's yeah. better. Yeah. But yeah. again, <laughs> I kufar, <laughs> kufar. <laughs> <I'm, laughs> that's that sounds better. So you yeah. know what I said. That sounds better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, I I think even if it wasn't a big organization, having adab towards your neighbors yes. is something that we is, is recommended as Muslims. Something that we should do. So that in itself, just passing your condolences on. I don't see a problem with that, mm. but why do you? For me, it's a it's an issue of consistency and the message it sends out to the Muslims because because most Muslims, okay, most Muslims, including ourselves, are 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 lay. They're not educated. Okay. The nuances of these things, for example, you know, amongst us in our group chats, we're very used to the discussion of you know. Can you uh, grieve? Can you say in Allah for the for the non-Muslims? Can you ask for their forgiveness? And we we're aware of these things being, you know, we've asked these questions and our teachers have said, you know, no, but this is what you can do. So we're aware of that. But a lot of Muslims are not aware of the difference between we can pass our condolences and we pray for the you know, we pray for her soul or may she rest in peace. That's 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 a big thing for me. Yeah. So when when you have a lot of people, when you have a a, a lack of that um of that knowledge, that insight, the difference and the nuances between these things, messages sent out, um, uh, you know, mourning or whatever for the for the queen in the absence of messages. And by the way, I haven't checked the backlog of so whatever or whoever's. I didn't. I didn't even want to mention them anyway. But of of, of the, any organisation's twitters, it's an issue of consistency. So when something that is more tragic to the Muslims, and I understand that you know we live in the UK, but as far as, far as as far as I'm concerned, the Ummah, uh, you know, is, is supersedes the 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 UK. So the Muslim community supersedes the kind of UK. Um, when you're when you're when you're putting such messages out, I think it can be construed as you know inconsistent and 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 view and and putting precedent on certain something like the Queen passing away over, you know. These girls get kidnapped in Nigeria. These, you know, these, there's floods in Pakistan. Um, civil war in Somalia, etc., etc., etc. Things that are to the Muslims, to the Ummah, more catastrophic, more sad, more. Again, your from for me that is you're adding source to it. That's the way I see it. Yeah. If you're yeah. doing that, you're adding source to it because mm-hmm. this is because this is about this, and you've decided to now make it about that. No, but 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 what I'm saying is. So me, I see the message, and I can I can be like and keep it moving, but the effect it has. But that's not what the, the world we live in is, mm. is is not a world where that is what's going to happen. And these people mm. are the people in off. They are like these these Muslim organizations are an authority. So when we're living in an age where we constantly talk about um, you know people glorifying the non-Muslim, people glorifying celebrity culture, people doing this, people mm. doing this, people doing this. Mm. Are you part of the machine by putting out statements about that that are basically under pressure due to public culture? You know what the way I and the, the way I see it is a masjid of a, not even a masjid of that organized of that size. A masjid in general, I don't think it's their responsibility to cater to people with the lowest of knowledge, because uh-huh. for those people, 
it's their responsibility to go and gain knowledge to remove themselves from ignorance. So Islamic, like the, you know, I mean, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say, "Don't make your prophet, your, your salah too long for those who are weak and evil." I mean, stuff like of course, so. So the, of Im- course, the of imam course, and the messenger's responsibility kind of is but, to the lay, not but, but, the what, what, what not okay, to, okay, yeah for the fair enough, But what I mean by that is, a masjid can't or shouldn't. I don't think shouldn't tailor all of their messages to please everyone because certain man over there might misconstrue it. Mm-hmm. For me, you need to have the presence of mind and the self-awareness to see that if a masjid is putting out this kind of statement, this isn't something that just would have been st- random Joe yes. on, or, yes, yes. Uh, or random yeah. admin of the account has just put out. Yes. This would have been looked at. Which, so which you I need to have to, the yeah. presence of mind and self-awareness to see, okay, if a masjid has put this out, clearly there must be something that is at the is okay about this not that it's completely halal but it it's okay if they've put the message out of course because of course um there's there's a hadith of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um Muhammad. that he wept for his mother and his and his, and his mom was a non believer yes. and he and I'm paraphrasing here he asked Allah if he could pray for her forgiveness and he exactly, forbade her but yeah. he said you can you can visit her visit grave. grave so that you can mourn and death exactly and, and it can remind you of death yes, yes, yes. so I, th- I feel like in these kind of situations, people need to apply sense and see that if if if, if an organisation has put a message like this out, okay, clearly there must be some sort of um, backing mm-hmm. to this. They wouldn't have just done it on a whim. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's upon me to go and look for research and find out, you know, is this okay? Not to just jump on mm-hmm. the internet and start doing Twitter fingers. No, Twitter fingers will never be excused. A hundred. And the thing is, I, no, there's nothing that you've said that I disagree with. Yeah. My only issue is is that i do believe that okay now okay what it throws up for me is that we are that everybody maybe is culpable to this world where dunya matters society matters pub, public uh popular culture etc is so important that even you know the message you'd have to put out Celebrity stuff, not celebrity. Do you know what I mean? It's like like The Rock is doing statements. Do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's like, oh, should there not be again, an essence of separation? Again, because and another I, thing is, and and is it genuine? So if it's not genuine and it's to feed something, and there's no is like okay, I wouldn't say there's no Islamic benefit. Okay, because you've given a, a possible Islamic benefit to it mm. in terms of perception of that. But when when the Islamic benefit is can be questioned, yeah. Is it something that is good to do, better to do than not doing than staying silent? And before that, you can go into and what another thing that and people may be screaming at the table at the at the television, whatever, and will be screaming saying, you know, maybe our Asian people, people from India, Pakistan, Bang, uh, Bangladesh, who in terms of their lives mm. have been essentially kind of destroyed, or th- their countries have been, you know, heavily destroyed by the monarchy. Mm. And what everything that the monarchy, because we need, to, we haven't really got into that. Everything that the monarchy you know represents. What? Again, I head of head of the Church of I England. Genu- I genuinely, <clears throat> I genuinely just feel like you're adding sauce to. No, it. but that's what that's what that's what the because if somebody the Queen dying is not the death of the monarchy, yeah. Okay. So 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 the death of the monarchy, and there's another thing people have done, which is people have acted as if the queen die and means that the monarchy is dead and with something that should be celebrated. Though if the monarchy, you know, obliterates and gets replaced by Sharia law, mm. I know uh, CIA just started watching us, <laughs> but th- th- then that is something essentially that, you know, should be celebrated. Yeah. But the queen dying is, doesn't mean that the queen dying gets replaced by the king. Mm. Um, so people need to not mix that up as well. That's another thing. So, so it's not something that you can say, oh yeah, it's good because it means that, you know, it means that some of the monarchy now, because, that's not how it works. Yeah. But for me, yeah, man, I just think I'm, I want to move on. I just think that um, it just does. It, it leaves a, a a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth. It does. I understand. Because others I, are gonna follow. I just and, I, it should, and for, no, anything that's not genuine for me should not be tweeted. You, why do you assume it's not genuine though? Huh? Why do you assume it's not genuine? And another thing is, and okay, but I'll, I'll before I answer that question and. These people, I believe, speak for their communities, which so I something like this on behalf of the community because you are speaking for the community. Mm. 
like when people don't may not agree with what you're saying, mm. I don't think is almost fair because no, it isn't because for, for for that person for that you know Muslim who may be justified in this not being happy because of this 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 and this. Remember what we say about you know when Muslims ruin things for other Muslims. Mm. A Muslim who has opinions maybe that may be different, justified Islamically, may find it difficult to express those more difficult to express those more. He may find more get more backlash if he expresses those views maybe when asked mm. because of statements like these. Mm. I, that's the other. That's the other thing. I, again, I, I, I really just feel like if you have a problem with that statement in itself, I do feel like you're adding sauce to it mm. a little bit because mm. the statement in itself, there's not actually anything wrong with it. If your, if, if your colleague's mum died and you passed condolences on to her, of course, you wouldn't be wrong for that. Of course. So the fact that this is in when a, when a funeral of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when 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 a funeral procession is passing so that you should stand yeah, up and exactly. be respectful exactly. stand up and s- silently until yeah. it's passed or the person is buried. So, so the fact that this is now in public, I don't think should change that. Okay. Personally, I just I I just think if yeah, the, honestly, the way I read that statement was that that is just general adab that you're passing condolences onto your neighbour and. You've now because it's public, because it's a masjid, because it's the queen. You're you're just adding sauce to it. That's what I think personally. Not you specifically, but the people that <laughs> because they would have because they would have sent a statement because Doris from next door died. <laughs> Obviously, that's, that's you know so, what? Jeremy, the sauce is already added. Like you're, you can't accuse Jeremy you know, because when Doris that lives in ninety six B bro dies, then, they're not um, gonna they're not drop a statement. Yeah, but. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's the machine. Of, of it's the machine, not, bro. It's the machine. Listen, the social media, I'm, I'm not gonna, culture I'm, machine. I'm not going to respond to that point because you yourself, you know why that point is silly. But How, let's, I, move I, huh? let's move on. Let's move on, Abdul Let's move on. Okay. Yeah, we ain't got much time for my group. Um, okay. Um, people's involvements in the funeral, uh, in any ceremonies that go on, because things are no doubt going to happen at work. Mm. There's going to be vigils, moments of silence. There's going to be all these types of things, and it's going to it will flag up, and people think people may ask, you know, what what's my what involvement am I allowed to have in these things? Um, generally, the principle is a uh, well, there are, there is a difference of opinion, but you know the safest the safest opinion um, opinion taken and uh, issued in a, a fatwa by Sheikh Fazan Rahimullah is you know that anything that involves um, participating in rituals that yeah. of the of the of the mushrikeen essentially mm. uh it is a no-no uh and in attendance often your know, attendance will be heavily perceived as involvement you know whom services an evil remove it from with, with, with your hand with your voice hate hey, in the well, heart well. weakest of your man so so attendance and you know willing attendance and participation uh does not meet any of those three categories so um general the general advice is gonna be to not attend. Don't attend these things, and that's something that is a uh, that has been difficult for people. And I know um, flags up with people uh, a lot. Like even for example, for myself, um, I've got a lot of non-Muslim family, um, including my mum, as you may know. So like, um, um, so like involvement in non-Muslim ceremonies, especially funerals, that kind of crops up a lot. And it's a difficult time. So like, I don't know, have you ever had that type of uh, situation crop up for you? Or where, and it might even be just something like a wedding and somebody wants you to be involved in some aspects of a wedding or or something that is just kind of anti-Islamic. Mm-hmm. Um, what, have you ever been in that situation or how would you deal with it? You haven't. See, you lucky people that just have Muslim in your whole family. I'll talk about myself then. <laughs> so, Sorry. So, <laughs> cheers. Um, so like, for me, yeah. It is it well. It's one of the most difficult things, um, and the reason I say that is because uh, generally, as a Muslim who's got family that's non-Muslim, your main kind of priority and focus is to guide them. Mm. Um, pray Allah guides them to to Islam and do whatever da'wah you can. And a lot of the time, that da'wah is in your actions. You know, it could add up showing the the, the uh, effect of Islam on your mannerisms, on your kind of everyday life, on how you live your life. And a lot of the times, that is seen as a as a positive, there's no one I know that sees Islam and says that Islam has had a negative impact on you. Yeah. Everybody I know, Muslim and including all my Muslim, non-Muslim family, 
will praise Islam for the effect that it has on kind of how uh, how our how how our behavior is. Me and my sisters, for example. But whenever the, where Islam falls down in their eyes, basically, is whenever Islam gets in the way of their fun, yeah. of their culture, of their celebrations, and of their yeah of those things. For example, dancing at weddings. Mm. For example, um, funerals. For example, um, how you're interacting with family members, that type of thing. I'm mean, like, it is, it is, it is very difficult. Um, and at these times, kind of my advice to people is always, obviously, just remember that it's it's Allah that is the is the one that can turn hearts. Uh, it's it's it, guidance comes from Allah, and not from our dawa. Um, and it's something that Allah, you know, even reminded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, about. And in in uh, Surah Qasas, I forgot the verse. Um, yeah, man, um, it's a tight one. It, well, I hear it's a tight one, but um, I think the importance is, I mean, it's like what we were discussing last week, just being being the confident Muslim. If you're a confident Muslim yeah. and you're kind of you're, you've got you know confidence in your own position and in your faith, and you've got knowledge then inshallah these things won't affect you as much. Um, I'm going to quickly check the camera, just take over, um, before I want to drop a little story of when I was uh, younger. Yeah, uh, to be honest, as, as you were talking, I, I have very, very, I think, brief experiences, nothing that I can really compare, compare to what you've said. But um, I guess, it, yeah, it goes back to what we were talking about kind of last week as well, about being a confident Muslim, some of the stuff we mentioned at camp as well, about grounding yourself in knowledge and making sure that you have that knowledge yourself because you don't, because you, you only speak confidently about the things that you have knowledge in. People that speak confidently, or people that speak confidently about things they don't have knowledge about, you know, are usually stupid people to them, it happens a lot. No, no, no I'm saying it's not. But generally, the people you interact with day to day will speak confidently about things that they have knowledge on. And these that having that knowledge can keep you from those kind of sticky situations. I'm not saying that you should go out and be debating non-Muslims, but if someone asks you, you know, why you can't do a certain thing or why you've declined a certain invitation, you should be able to have the confidence to say, you know, this is why and this, this and this is the reason, not just, you know, because my religion says no, because, you know, what benefit is that going to do for the way they look at you and the way they, they view Islam? So yeah, um, mm. knowledge people. Yeah, I think growing up, especially when I was younger, um, what I saw a lot of was people that were em- embarrassed of Islam. And, yeah. and, and, and it's very understandable why that occurs. And it's something that I, you know, suffered from my, from my not yeah, suffered myself with um, at times, maybe not to a large extent, because it's kind of the way my family unit was, but, but it's still a thing. I remember when I was in school, there was a guy um, and I went to a Catholic school. Um, there was about three Muslims in the whole school. So I'm not really narrowing it down much. It wasn't me. 50-50 <laughs> chance. Um, and yeah, the, I remember there was a, there was a guy yeah, who obviously was Muslim, but like there used to be a lot of like uh, anti-Islamic jokes. Obviously there's a lot of jokes about everything in school, especially in the boys' school. Pekka, Pekka, like, it's just mm. banter, banter we'll say, innit? Yeah. But um, I remember there was one guy particularly, the person that made the most jokes the most like derogatory comments about Muslims, Islam, that type of thing, was a Muslim person. And do you know what it shows? It shows that when when you have obviously a lack of knowledge, which at that age none of us had real, yeah. real knowledge. None of us had any, you know, sustainable do I have real knowledge now. Um but when you don't have that kind of love for your religion, that sort of, you know, respect for your religion, you just you just treat it take it take it for idiot basically and that's mm. and that's what and that's what the person did i, I remember i remember like in graphics crisps. class here mm. i never forget there was um we had to make like a a packet of crisps or something something random i can't remember what it was yeah i remember man called his um man called his thing muzzies and it was like but it, it was so unpro- like you know that like unprovoked just, uh, yeah. it's like it's like you there was no yeah. need i, I don't even feel like that's not having love for your religion at that age i feel like that's just a lack of respect for yourself yeah because it's even, combination at, yeah. at secondary school uh, how many man? Hopefully, there are there, there are uh, young children out there that have a love for their dean right now. But speaking for myself, I don't think I had a. I knew I was Muslim, and I knew I was Muslim, and I. I, I want to say I was. 
when I say I was proud to be Muslim, I was outwardly Muslim, but yeah. I wouldn't say at that age that maybe I had a love yeah. for the religion at that point. So, yeah, I just feel like at that age, if you're making those kind of jokes, I feel like it's almost the lack of respect to yourself. Do you know what I think it comes from? Obviously, it's a time we've grown up, you know, growing when the time we grew up, we grew up in a world where Muslims, the, the interpretation of Muslims was that we were terrorists. Yeah. I'll, carry on, I'll carry on after that then. Okay. Um, that's my, my name's uh, Salam so alaikum Allah. I'm back um, after my group. Um, so just yeah, just touching back on what I was saying. Yeah, man. I think, um, and when I'm referring to, for example, that brother, and even myself, who, for example, would laugh at like terrorist jokes and stuff like that when I was, and this is when you know, 11, 12 years old or whatever. I think it comes from a place of um, lack of pride in your religion, and when you're a Muslim, obviously, and even at that age. Me, whatever, all the brothers in that in that school, for example, would have all shared the opinion that Islam was the correct religion, and that um, we had a hope that you know all of our friends would be Muslim. And when you have a lack of uh, pride, knowledge, respect, that type of thing of your religion, the way you almost, what you almost do is essentially it's like okay, I need to make this religion accessible. I need to make it more palatable for people because mm. I, I still want them to become Muslim, but I can't you know impose Islam on them because Islam you know oh. doesn't make sense or you know mm. Islam's wrong or whatever. that's the kind of mindset you might have that's a hell of an excuse you're giving my man bro. Huh? that's a hell of an excuse no, you're giving no, I, I, this because <laughs> think about it, like when if, if Islam wasn't seen as especially those days Islam wasn't a palatable type of yeah. you know you know real Islam it's not like and a lot of the things or the themes of Islam kind of when it comes to and we always speak about this it directly contradicts um, a lot of the kind of social norms and social life, morals and customs of yeah. ways of life in the West. 100%. So if that's what you've grown up with, um, you're naturally going to almost, you know, these are things you're still questioning maybe yourself. Mm. So for you to now try to proudly, impo- uh, you know, preach them and impose them on other people, you're not going to do that. So you still want to be Muslim. So what are you going to do? You're almost going to hide those things. You're going to sugarcoat things. You're going to, this is what people do. And when it comes to Muslims, for example, and this is linking it back, taking it back to the whole Queen situation, is when you're rushing to almost please or you know yeah please the the, the, the non-muslims before yeah. the muslims it comes from a place of having a lack of confidence in your own religion because it's, mm. if you want to if you have confidence because it comes from a good place but if you have confidence that you know you want to guide these people um then you won't have to need to compromise islam to do so the, 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 the you know i mean the sahaba the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he didn't he didn't sugarcoat Islam or, or change Islam or you know mod- modify things to make it more palatable for the Croatian and the, and the, and the different people they, they they preach Islam with confidence that mm. it is it's the you know deal hack and and <laughs> and people will people will come to the truth which is which is what happened um but that takes confidence and mm. knowledge um so you know that's why you know calling to Islam upon knowledge is is is, is very important and yeah. people are going to give that or you have to have knowledge and anyone who advises people that have dawah and this is advice for ourselves first and foremost is that you have to kind of keep on learning as, as you go um yeah man um yeah are we are we leaving it there yeah we can leave it there I oh don't watch Peppa Pig though <laughs> fire for that no no more no more no more words need to be said yeah fire for that <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it um yeah I guess I think the general message I guess we're trying to pass across is I don't think that anyone should feel I don't know you know pressured to be sending tributes and stuff like that I'm looking at I'm I'm not sure what kind of situations other people are in but I, I know I definitely don't feel you know any pressure to send condolences or send tributes I mean you know if you genuinely don't have anything beneficial to say or if you're unsure about something the best thing to do is either just not say it or go and do a fact check go and go, go and seek knowledge in it so, um, but don't mock as well, man. Don't yeah. mock. Like, I know yeah, people make uh, jokes, and that's why. Yeah, don't yeah, mock. I know, uh, yeah t- Twitter is a wild place. Yeah, it's not. It's like not enough, yeah. Nothing. Nothing is. Nothing is serious there. Um, yeah, I mean, we we laugh at it for entertainment, but you know, yeah, it's, and it's it's, it's it's it is when you think about it, it's quite strange. Um, yeah, it's, there, it's, it's there, extreme, yeah. there is a place for celebrating, and you know, just to get out there, there is a place for celebrating death in Islam. Yeah, but you know, um, the death for those who were overtly transgressors against the mm. Muslims, against the overtly enemies of the Muslims. Those are the people that, you know, so when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make dua against, for example, the non-Muslims, he would specify people. He wouldn't say, 
you know, well, well, well in all of them. It was, yeah. it was it was specific people, and that's that's the kind of example we should follow. So yeah. respect is still, is still, yeah. still a thing. Um, yeah, um, man. I guess we will leave it there. Thank uh, you for listening. Um, do the usual stuff like share it with people if you benefited. You know, put stuff down in the comments for us to interact with. I heard um, something about the algorithm. If people comment, so let's get the algorithm algorithming. Wow. <laughs> And on that on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave comments, gel off after gym everywhere. Um yeah. Shout out shout out to the new intern. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> intern. Yeah. Uh, uh sound correct love, but it gets ولما قسى قلبي وضاقت مذاهبي جعلت رجائي دون عفوك سلما تعاظمني ذنبي فلما قرنته بعفوك ربي كان عفوك أعظما فما زلت ذا عفو عن الذنوب لم تزل تجود وتعفو منة وتكرما